everyone's favorite, little dolls. I wrote a book once on small dolls. I called it in the palm of your hand because to me that's what the joy of them are, the little dolls that could fit in the palm of your hand. Um, a trend that has remained popular in doll history from earliest time of commercial doll making, right on through the 8-inch Ginnies, the little Alexanderkins of the 1950s and 60s. But these dolls were made in France, our whole little collection there, and they were made in 1880s. Wonderful collection. I have a collector, there is a, a really famous collector of little dolls, and once he called and asked about a doll, and I said, well, did you notice this other doll? And Because he only collected little ones. And I said, well, what about such and such, this other doll? And he said, oh, no, that's 12 inches. That is much too big. My little dolls, they're little. So it's very, it's interesting, the perception of them. I wanted to show a couple here so you could just really get a sense of how large these dolls are. And hold on one minute. Now, do you see how small they really are? This is like a 24-inch doll. And she's a giant compared to these little beauties. And so just kind of help you to gain perspective in when you're looking at the size of them. So let me take you through them. We have on this side, remember I talked to you before about the jumeau poupée, and I said, now wait till we get the bébés, and you're going to see how that face from the poupée evolved into the early child dolls. And here is a wonderful example of one of the earliest uh, bébés made by Emile Jumeau. Very, very wonderful, with her original lamb's wool wig. She even has her original comb in her hair uh, that Jumeau advertised appeared in his dolls, and she has her original hair bow and her original Jameau dress. Things were much simpler at the beginning of the Jameau production, 1877-1878. Um, stand still. Um, the eye cuts were sometimes irregular. The painting was sometimes irregular. It was not until we got up into the, like oh, six years later that they became so um, quality control minded and things would be absolutely perfect that way. But these earlier models by Jumeau, they have a charm that is not to be surpassed. Take a look at this early one by Jumeau. This is the one that, she doesn't have a particular model number or name, but when she shows up, which is so infrequently, we'll maybe have one every five years, she'll always have that little tiny smile on her face. And it's very, very, um, desirable to see. Uh, original costume, wonderful shoes, superb bisque, and if I turn it this way, hopefully the camera can even see how the Jameau eyes at this point, this is still like 1878, are starting to develop into that great depth of that paperweight quality they have. What a gem. She truly is in the palm of the hand. She's a wonderful doll. I just want to turn these both, I'll turn them backwards now so you can kind of see the back of their costume. And the next one we have is an absolutely wonderful, tiny E.J. Bebe. When Jameau decided to start indicating um, that the dolls were made by him and marked his dolls with an E.J. And this is his little tiny size one with the original Jameau dress. And wait a second, take a look at this. Look at the shoes, the original rose satin shoes. And now look. That is so rare and so special to find that. It's absolutely wonderful. I put in this little Jumeau because it is a little tiny size one also. And what I loved about it, it has the original sign Jumeau body, original wig, and it even has this dandy little chemise that, had, that are little pants, and I've never seen that before. So very, very different to me with the short hair and that pant chemise. This was sold as a little boy to begin with. Absolutely a wonderful piece. We have another Jumeau, which is a rare model, that has the incised Deposé Jumeau mark on the back of the head. This was only made for about one year. Very, very rare model to find. And this little girl is wearing her original Jumeau couturier dress. 
turn her around so you can see her. And I'm going to put her head up a little so she can look at you proudly. Very beautiful doll. A little brew. We could have put her in with a whole family of brews, but I wanted her to be with the little dolls so you could appreciate how tiny she is. This is the first model of brew, the first Bebe known as the Bebe Brevet because it had a mark on the body that said Bebe Brevet. Um, in this wonderful antique piquet gown, and she's even holding her own little doll. She has her own little bonnet, and we'll take a look at her. See, she's absolutely grand. Beautiful bisque. She has her all original, very, very sturdy body. Ursula Breck, in choosing her dolls, she tried to get dolls with wooden bodies, but when she got the kid body dolls, when she has them, they're just so perfect. It's so rare to find it like that. Now, not only was Jumeau making the little miniature dolls, but so was Jules Steiner. And we have two examples of the little Jules Steiner Series C Bebe, again, in this tiny, tiny little size, and both of them wearing original costumes. Uh, the, this little girl in the green has her paperweight eyes, and the little girl in the blue has the original wire lever eyes. And let me just see if I can get up to the wire here now. And here we go. So I can make her little eyes open and close for you. I also think it's wonderful that the Jules Steiner wire eye dolls actually have a signature on the back of the eyes. That's Jay Steiner, which is wonderful. I want you to see her costume all the way around. It's pretty extraordinary also. This is the doll is a gem. Can you tell when you watch these sometimes which are my favorites? And there it's the back of hers. It's wonderful. And our Mr. Gaultier, Monsieur Gaultier, made beautiful little bebés also. This one with really rich clarity of the blue eyes that are so extraordinary to find. Very, he always had little plump faces on his dolls, which make them very special. And this one, again, in a wonderful antique costume and holding her own little cobalt blue-eyed doll. Super, super doll. And another of the FG, and this being the earlier one, very early model, with the kid body and bisque hands. Very, very rare to find uh, this body on the Gaultier. You see, Gaultier started making the kid bodies first, just like Brew did, but he very quickly realized it was better to be making them with composition. There was a better market for them. More children would buy them. Consequently, what does that mean? For you as a collector today, this is the rarer model. So these are just all things you want to kind of consider when you're making your choices. I know you wish you could have them all. Everyone would. They're just, they're just a, a wonderful joy. I hope while you're able to come to the auction and see all of these dolls in person because they'll be in beautiful settings and it's such an enthusiastic and happy and wonderful environment to be able to see everything at one time together. So now I want to bring up the discussion of what do you do with a damaged doll? I have such strong feelings about this, and I have been promoting it for 30 years, and I will continue to promote it. We are talking about antiques. We're talking about, in our field, items that are between usually between 100 and 150 years old. You cannot expect perfection. If you do, you shouldn't be collecting antiques. It's not going to happen. Hey, look at us. We haven't made it as far as we have by being perfect as we were when we were young. So I have two fabulous dolls to show you that are good examples of this issue that every collector needs to deal with. They're both very, very rare and very extraordinary dolls. The first one is the model by Brew, again our friend Mr. Leon Casimir Brew, known as Bebe Gourmand. Now, he marketed this way as Bebe Gourmand. He advertised it for only two years. It very, very seldom ever shows up at all on the market. We probably have had over 40 years, maybe three, four, five examples of this doll. So if you're a collector of the brood Bebe and you want to have examples of every type, what are you going to do? Because this fellow 
has restoration on his face, restoration to the bisque on his face. Now, do you know what the Bebe Gourmand does? This one's a very unique doll. I don't know what Prue was thinking of, let me tell you, this is crazy. He had an open mouth and there would be a little t tongue and a biscuit came with the doll and you put the biscuit in the tongue and it, there was inside the kid body, there is metal tubing and the biscuit would fall through the metal tubing, fall all the way down through his legs and out the bottom of the specially designed shoe that was made for this doll, the shoe that had a trap door at the bottom. Now, what was Brew thinking of? What were you teaching a child about digestion when you were teaching them that your biscuit came out the bottom of your foot? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And I guess it didn't to people at the time because the doll was really not successful. However, however, very beautiful face, very distinctive body, the Brew body with this exception no jointing at the hips at all, and the lower part, the bottom leg and the foot were bisque, bare feet, with a hole at the bottom of the foot for the biscuit to fall through into the trap door of the shoe. If you um, look in our catalog or you go online to look at our catalog or get a print copy of the catalog, you'll see what the actual body looks like. Extraordinarily rare. Now, this doll, were it perfect, is like a $40,000 doll. So you have two questions to ask yourself. One, number one, do you like it and you'd like to have it? And then you'd have to decide, are you willing to compromise to buy this doll with it not being perfect? And these are, there's no right answer. There's no right answer, right or wrong. To me, the right answer is, yes, you would if you could buy it for the right price. With the type of damage on this face, you'd want to buy it for perhaps 30% of what a perfect one would cost you. But you have to decide. I know some absolutely, out, I know one absolutely fabulous, world-class collection, one of the best in the world. She would never buy a damaged doll. That's just how she feels. I have another collector, another world-class collection that says, yes, I will buy a damaged doll if the damage is not disfiguring to the doll, if the doll does not appear to have been made more fragile because of this, and then I will hope that someday I can find a perfect one and I'll replace it. But in the meantime, I have this doll in my collection, and if I bought it right, then for the right price, then I'm happy with it. So our little Bebe Gourmand is a really good example. And he's a really a, kind of an unusual example because you have things here you could be buying like the shoes that are really rare to find. Even if you find the Bebe Gourmand, you very seldom ever find the shoes. So that's a special feature all in itself. But that's a particular doll and very specialized. Now we come to another example. There's nothing specialized about the, this doll. This doll is just beauty, absolute beauty. One of Ursula Breck's favorite dolls, she featured it on the front of her calendar. She featured it in her books. It was a, a very important doll to her. It is by Aristide Halepo, the H doll, the famous H doll. And here she is, absolutely an extraordinary doll. Any collector would dream of having this as the focal of their collection. She has one little problem, and I'm going to let the camera show you as well as it does appear at all, which is not well. Right under her chin, for about an inch, there is a very, very faint hairline, a hairline that <laughs> in all likelihood is probably original, but nevertheless, it's there, and you must express it's there when you are buying or selling the doll because it factors into the price you would pay. Now, with what I said the points before, one, does the damage affect the beauty of the doll in any way? No, you can hardly see it, even when you're looking for it. Number two, is this a doll that you would love to own? I would say for 99% of you, the answer is absolutely yes. So then your only answer you have to say to yourself is, am I willing to accept it with this little line under the chin? And if I do accept it, what is the price I would be willing to pay 
for this or for this if it were perfect? What's the price differential? These are all discussion points and they're, they're just worth having because you need to be thinking about these things before you're actually confronted with a decision of whether you will buy a given DAO or not buy it or what you will pay for that DAO. Okay, that's enough of my lecturing for today. But take a look at her. Let me show you her costume all the way around. This DAO is so gorgeous. I love her. And I know that Ursula Breck did too. In her calendar, she features her with a big wide brimmed straw hat and we do have that hat which we will be selling with her also. As well as this one which lets her little face show a little better. Beautiful H doll.